Got a super chat here from Cali FPV. Thank you for five dollars, Cali FPV. Have you heard of the fire sense extinguishers and would it work with lipo fires? I have not. Well, maybe I have. Fire sense extinguisher. Uh, what is the fire sense extinguisher? I have heard of these. Uh, what does it do? It's a compact, easy, and efficient extinguisher. What do you do? How does it work? Does it just poof out? Let's look. Oh, that's a lot of fire there, buddy. Oh, it's just like a spray can. Oh, that worked real good. So here's the thing. Um, first of all, do they have a lipo specific one? I'm not sure. Um, the thing is, once a lipo battery starts going off, it is difficult to impossible to stop it because it has the oxygen that it needs inside the cell. So all of the combustion, all of the elements necessary for combustion to happen are inside the cell. You can smother it to, to sort of s minimize the flames, but the cell will continue to smolder and burn. Uh, so trying to extinguish a lipo fire doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, my rule of thumb is when a lipo starts to go off, the number one thing you want to do is move it to a safe area where it can't start any secondary fires or you want to contain secondary fires. But the idea that you're going to put out a lipo with a fire extinguisher, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, uh, Danander refers to something called the Jewel Lithium Battery Fire Extinguisher. So I have heard of some fire extinguishers that are specifically made to kill a lipo fire. I don't know how they work, but it is something that has just started in my, at least it's just come to my awareness in the last maybe six months or so. Um, so, you know, pin that, that it's out there. But generally fire extinguishers, traditional fire extinguishers, they won't put out a lipo fire. They will only extinguish the secondary fires, which is still a big deal because like the lipo goes boosh and very quickly burns itself out. But it has lit so many other things on fire in the meantime that your house burns down. So here is the Lith X2 fire extinguisher to protect against the unique threat posed by lithium battery fires. Revolutionary lithium battery fire extinguisher. What does it do? It's not gonna tell us. It's not going to tell us because it's a secret. Well, let's take a look at a video. How much is it? They're not going to tell us. Find a distributor. All right. Uh, I am very annoyed that the United States is not first on the list. That's not how this is supposed to work. That I don't care who's first in alphabetical order. America. North America. Okay, okay. Now that's just a slap in the face. Okay, fine. It's the global region. The United States is not first. Fine. That's okay. I will let that slide. But to go to North America and freaking freaking Canada is first on the list. Shh. That is an affront to the dignity. Even Canadians would agree that they should be second. Come on. <laughs> I posted a video explaining how it works. Aqueous vermiculite dispersion. Are you protected? No. How the fuck much are they? Stop. Why won't you tell me how much they are? No, you got to call us. Shut the... F oh, I hate you. Uh, okay, blunty has got a video showing how it works. Great. Yep. I don't think we need this music. Yes, that's exactly how it goes. Correct. Yep, that's damn... So far, so good. Oh, 
Oh, oh, look at that. It like smothers the battery. That's interesting. It cools and smothers the battery to stop the runaway. That's really interesting. That's right. Okay. Very cool. Uh, too bad no one will tell me how much they are. Well, maybe I'll buy one. Test it out. That's very interesting. All right. Uh, so, to sum up, is your fire blanket any good? Yes. The reason your fire blanket is good is that... So, so here's the priorities for a LiPo safety. Okay, are you ready? Number one. When a battery is damaged, stop using it. Only actually keep and use healthy batteries. This will, this is the single biggest thing you can do to protect yourself from lipo fires. Um, number two, when you're charging, be present so that you notice when things start to go wrong. A lipo will will seldom just immediately boom fire you will almost always if you're paying attention have some warnings that something ain't right now you may only have 10 or 15 seconds of warning depending on the battery you may have you may have more if you're really paying attention but you almost always get a warning be present because the sooner you respond to the situation the better it's going to be for you number three this is the one that everybody breaks including me when you're charging, charge somewhere where if there was a fire, it would be okay. Now, I charge on the bench right behind me. And some Someday, if I have a fire, I'm going to be real sad. But I feel like I do enough of the other things to be okay with it. That's my personal risk profile, and it's personally the chance I take. And, you know, if I turn out to be wrong one day, I'll be very sad. Um, now... All of those things have failed and you have a fire. See, if you were doing number three, that if you had a fire, you would go, oh, huh, well, I got a fire. It's going to be over soon and life would go on. But you have now have a fire in a place where there you don't want there to be a fire. Your number one priority is to prevent secondary fires. The lipo will burn itself out very quickly in a few seconds. Um, at least the first cell will. If it's a multi-cell battery, then the, s the subsequent cells will usually go off. It'll go boosh, 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 boosh. It, sometimes it'll go up all at once, but sometimes it won't. But that'll be over very quickly, and it will have lit other things on fire. So smothering the flames absolutely is effective. The other reason why a fire blanket can be useful is if you can wrap up the whole damn thing in a blanket and move it out the window or out the door, that can help you, you know, can help mitigate things. And then the last step, the last step is use a fire extinguisher to put out secondary fires. In my opinion, that's the order that you should go do it in. Um, yeah. We should also, I would say, also mention bat safe. Absolutely. Uh, Everything I, 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 my batteries are never not in a bat safe unless they're being flown pretty much. So bat safe is a container that is used for battery store. No, no, just click this and nothing happens. Cool. Cool. I love how we have RC battery safety and drone battery safety. No, nothing, nothing. The whole website just doesn't do, doesn't work. Okay, great. <laughs> so BatSafe is a fire protective box that's designed for storing and charging batteries. You can store batteries in the BatSafe. You can also, there is a pass through that you can, you can charge batteries in the BatSafe. And the, uh, the idea is that it is a fire temperature protective case. And then there's a filter on the lid to filter out the smoke. So this, you get less smoke damage if one goes off. This yeah, is sort of, of the, in chat... the gold oh, standard. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, a lot of people in chat have mentioned the ammo can. And the only downside to the ammo can is that yeah, also make sure you take out the, the, uh, the grommet in it. The... Yeah. 
the seal uh, so that it, air can get out. But basically, the problem with the can is that it doesn't filter the smoke. So you've got the fire contained, but it's a really hot metal box. And now you've got smoke pouring out that's like acrid, dark lipo smoke. Yeah. So, you know, the, the goal is to have, you know, the bat safe is more expensive, but it filters it and it prevents all that from getting out because it's an insulated box, too. Yeah, correct. Well, and the ammo can, theoretically, the sides of the metal could get hot enough to ignite something outside. Now, that's that's a theoretical. I don't think it's very likely, but it is theoretically possible. Um, as you said, Blunty, I'm, in fact, going to draw a little diagram here. If you do get the ammo can, one thing you can do is you can line it with a fire blanket or line it with even some kind of... Um, like the, the, the fire retardant cement board that they get. I've heard of people cutting sheets of that and lining it to create, to, to prevent heat transmission. But as you said, Blunty, what you have to do, there's a, there is a, a gasket that goes around the top lip. And, and if you, it makes a relatively airtight seal, well, watertight seal for sure. And so if uh, one goes off inside, it creates a pressure vessel. And I'm not suggesting it's gonna like explode like a bomb but it's not good. So what you can do is you don't want to remove the front of the gasket because then this, this locking lip won't lock correctly. It'll just be floppy. So what I suggest people do is they just remove like, just like a little bit of the gasket here and here, and you could just kind of pull it out and cut it away, but leave, leave behind the front part so that the lid still closes correctly. And that creates enough of a vent that the smoke can get out. But, Blunty, as you pointed out, uh, it, you're still going to get smoke all in your house, which isn't great. It can do almost more damage than the fire. Well, not more damage, but... It's I got certainly one more... better than nothing. But... Oh, yeah. I got one more video. Let's see. This is from Heliographics, who tested a ammo can. Here we got a metal... Is that a metal ammo can? Yeah, he's, you know, he's removing... I don't... You'll see that, well, he, you can't see it because he was careful about it. That little locking clasp is now loose and floppy, but he's just doing a demonstration. Woo, we got a rocket. It's a rocket ship, guys. We cannot see the screen. Oh, fuck. I'm so sorry, guys. My bad. Thank you, Plenty. So he removes the entire gasket, which I don't recommend. See, he kind of... It almost looks like he kind of, see how he kind of faked setting that down as if it was still clasping tightly? Because it's not anymore. Check this out. It's like it's trying to take off, man. It's trying to go to the freaking moon. And there we go. Boom! <laughs> uh, and then look at all that smoke coming out of there. Jeez. Why not drill a hole? Yeah, you could drill a hole and put a filter in front of it. Yeah, you could do that. You could. I mean, I don't know how well it would work. Woo! She done, boys. Wonder how hot the outside of that thing got. Now we got the bat safe. Here we go. Oh! Well, that's much nicer smoke. Oh! We still got a little bit of sparks coming out of there. But you can see the smoke is still not pleasant. Like, I'm still not, like, volunteering to have that in my house, but the ammo can did a really good job of containing the flames. And as test pilot Ian points out, like, the advantage of the ammo can is going to be that if you're there, when you start to see it going off, you'll grab it by the handle and you'll throw, you know, throw it out of the house. So, anyway... How many batteries is recommended to store in one? Well, the more batteries that are in there, the bigger the fire is going to be when one goes off. So you just roll the dice. I mean, there's a there's listed values on their website for what they can hold uh, safely. Yeah. What I recommend, I feel like this is a topic worth spending a little bit. Apparently, we're spending a you, long time. 661FBB says the ammo can looks safer. Did you see the two fire jets and the ammo can launch upwards earlier? Like, I think yeah. you're looking at a different video. Yeah. Um, I recommend having some fireplace gloves or welder's gloves nearby. Um, because with these, if you have a battery that's starting to go off, if you shove your hand in one of these and grab it and it goes poof right in your hand, you, you're going to be in a much better situation than if you were holding it uh, with your bare skin. 
So a fire blanket, also decent. 